before I get to my story of workplace uncomfortability. Uh, get this from theoretically. Okay. Gordon! Cop here. He's got some perspective on the license plate issue that we debated Giorgio on Friday, oh, yeah, I think front- it was. The front license plate. Mm-hmm. The cop here, the anonymous cop, says uh, the license plate statute states that the license plate has to be on the front most part of the vehicle. So the placing it on the dashboard isn't sufficient. Mm. Because that's what I was counting on covering me, was if I uh, see a cop and he starts pulling me over, I can just throw it up on the front dashboard. Does it really change the look of your front grill? I mean, yes. seriously? Yes. You're the, that into cars the, that, hey, man, I can't put a license plate up there. Why would I have that tone of voice? Messing up my grill. I don't, I don't say man a whole bunch <laughs> in my inner thoughts. I don't have my front one on either. See there? <gasps> but there's not a place for mine. Uh, they didn't put a bracket? No. Install a bracket for you? Uh, I think it ruins the look of the the front of the car, particularly some foreign models where they have the big grills on the front. There's no good place to put it. I've never thought of that. I just didn't have a place to put mine. Otherwise, I would have put it on. He said, uh, in addition, if Sam Williams actually had hard license plates, he should have also been issued a registration sticker. I suspect he did not have it displayed. So if he had a hard license plate on the back of that vehicle, I was speculating that maybe it was a new car so he still had paper plates mm. so that's why you wouldn't have a front license plate then i take it and, though, and a re- registration sticker when i was out you guys talked plenty about jerry's response to sam williams oh, yes. oh yeah yes we did. and that it really wasn't progress and it was you know jerry said hey what was he doing 66 that's progress mm-hmm. and it was really 71 and it was in a 45 so yeah. i don't know if that's really progress or not I don't know what I just said. (laughs) Theo continues. He says, if an officer has probable cause, they can search a vehicle without the consent of the owner and operator. But if an officer doesn't have probable cause and that officer asks to search your vehicle, you know what you should do? Say no. Craig? Say maybe. You You should ask the officer... Do you have probable cause or are you asking for consent? Hmm. If the officer says they're asking for consent, you can decide whether or not they search the vehicle. FYI, I would never give consent. This is an (laughs) officer speaking here. Uh, So that's a little clarification. Hey, guys. That's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. So you ask, do you have probable cause? Are you asking for consent? And if he says... I have probable cause. What do you say? Then you have no choice. Okay. Yeah. But the officer better make sure because it's been recorded now that he's stated that he has probable cause, so he can't lie and say, no, 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 the the driver gave me his consent. Can you ask what that cause is? Yeah, Yeah, what's your probable cause? I don't know. Good question. I would think you could, right? And if his answer is not sufficient to you... Can it you doesn't then matter. turn him down? No, I don't think you can. You have to go along with it then if he says he has probable cause. At that point, can you say, well, you can search my car if I get to search your car? I think that's only fair. <laughs> <laughs> Turnabout's fair play. We also had the story on Friday, I believe, while Junior was out in contract negotiations, and we're glad you got that result. It went well. It went well. Shut up. <laughs> um, we talked about the woman who shot her age. Was that on Thursday or Friday? That was Friday. Oh, Joanne I saw Carter. that. Joanne Carter, yeah. 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 Big mama. She shot an 80, I think it was, and yeah. she's 86. Did you like that, George? Loved it. <laughs> Loved it. Well, B- minus says, I played at Mesquite with a 91-year-old from my church three weeks ago. It was 106 outside that day. Mm. And the 91-year-old shot an 82. Wow. Damn. Yeah. He said 185 yards off the tee, right down the middle every time. Missed one putt inside of eight foot. Damn. Whoop, wow. Whooped my entire ass. So it's entire. Yeah. Did you see who else shot their age? Who's there that? is no way I believe that score. 
Former President Donald Trump said he shot a 67 this weekend. Yeah, you know what? We need to read that entire Ooh. truth or it's whatever. It's hilarious. Yeah. He's 77, <laughs> so he not only shot his age, he blew it out of the water. That's pretty good, George. You have to give him credit. Do you believe that? No, I don't. Number one, he is a known cheater on the golf course. Whoa. Number two. That sounds like some snowflake I wonder lies if, you're believing. I wonder if the score of 67 is with handicap. You know, because sometimes in club championships, yeah. you you play and say he's a. I think he claims to be a scratch, which I don't believe. Okay, I think he's, well, then let's no say he's a, on that score. Let's say he's a five or six handicap, and he played really well that day and shot like seventy four. With handicap, it's a sixty seven. Yeah, I don't believe he shot a legitimate sixty seven, and he brought up the fact that there were. Uh, secret servicemen there and mm-hmm. witnesses the, the very ambiguous uh, ambiguous people were watching yeah uh, many people, people watching. watching i think that doesn't so who's going to say something to him if he takes a four footer mm-hmm. nobody <laughs> i'm with you i don't think there's any way he shot a 67 he posted now some people will think that sounds low but there's no hanky lanky yep Many Very people watching, phrase. plus I'm surrounded by Secret Service agents. Not much you can do even if you wanted to, and I don't. So why would you say yeah, that? Many people many watching. People. He, then he says, for some reason, I'm just a good golfer slash athlete. Yep, for some reason. I have won many club championships. It's oh. always a great honor. Yeah, it is. So he's humbled by this. Just enough already. Just stop. I'm ready. <laughs> You're a jerk. <laughs> Uh, Justin says, my grandpa is 98, about to be 99, plays golf three to four times a week, and not only shoots his age every time he plays, but also shoots in the 80s. See there? There's people in their 80s yeah. and 90s who can do I this. I thought it was more rare than this. Now, granted, there's only three examples that we just heard. <laughs> I think it is pretty rare, probably. Okay, workplace uncomfortableness. <sighs> DJ is doing uncomfortable small talk in the break room. I oh, go in, no. I go in there. <laughs> I go in there and he's talking about weather. And uh, now, what was the thing you said? I asked if you were going to do a bit today at 840. Yeah, I asked that. Okay. And then he also, he said, he started off, his opener was, great day to be alive, isn't it? It's like, oh, gosh. Where's the lie? Work, workplace s- small talk in the company cafe is the worst. Did Gordo give you the Heisman? Boy, did, did. he. I tripped him. Yeah. I like, uh, yeah, I pushed him over a table, too, made sure he <laughs> fell down. <laughs> but it was funny. We had uncomfortable small talk. There was one bit of uncomfortable talk that happened last week, and I was left reeling by this incident with dj no it was not with dj it was with a woman who works here on this floor and i don't know who she is specifically but i was walking out the the door that leads to that elevator Uh and there was no one behind me i'm walking down the hall no one behind me so i walk out the door and there's a, a set of two doors right you go through one door and then there's a little small hallway and that leads to another door where you have to go that leads out to the restrooms and to the exit right mm-hmm. so i walk and i open the first door and it's closing behind me and i'm opening up the second door when i hear a voice coming from that first door and it's a woman she says not going to hold the door open wow just wow <laughs> and finally someone said that and something I, that needed to be said and i'm saying oh i'm so sorry i'm so sorry and i hear her say once again just wow <laughs> those doors slam wow. like too. i'm the biggest jerk in the world i love her whoever she is i didn't is. even know who anyone was behind me but i'm supposed to hold the door open for somebody that i didn't even know and i I would have done it had I seen her. Could always give a look back. Maybe you should always give a look back when you go through a door. Someone well, may so, sneak up behind you. Okay, do you always look back every time when you've been walking for 40 feet? And you I haven't do. Noticed someone you, behind I do you? Yeah, almost I do. every time. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> Whatever. So this disturbed me so much. And it, meanwhile, I was trying to leave. I was getting out of the, the building because I had an appointment. Generic. generic. Very generic. But uh, I was so disturbed by this. I waited for her to come back from the restroom to apologize to her again. 
Now she thinks you're weird. Yes. Uh, that's what I was doing. <laughs> the whole time I'm standing there, I'm thinking, God, does this seem very stalkery? Yes. Now yes. I'm waiting yes. for her to come back. Yeah, you're making it more awkward now. So she comes back, and I say, hey, look, I just want to apologize to you. I didn't see you back behind me and everything. She goes, I just didn't understand why you wouldn't open, open, leave the door open for me. Right. That's what Craig and I were still wondering. Yeah. Why so, didn't you? So then she I just, don't know if I'd and be she, putting on this headset. Then she keeps walking. <laughs> Want to know part of the apology either. She's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It just stayed with me all weekend. <laughs> Nailed it. Oh, man. I can't stand being a person. All right. We need to make her our P1 of the week. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Gordo. That's yeah. the O-deck. Thanks, Craig. Well, we saw where Bob Barker died this weekend at Very the age sad. of 99. Boy, that was a TV legend for you. Oh, yeah. When we were kids, I swear, that was on every day, wasn't it? Yep. yep. The Price is Right. And he ended every show with? Spay and neuter your pets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he would bring a, a live dog or cat on set, and he would spay or neuter it. He was a great a actor, dare. too. He had a great role in Happy Gilmore. You overrate that. When, when he and he, Happy fought. He fought with Adam Sandler in Happy Gilmore. Price is wrong, Bob. So stupid. <laughs> he hosted The Price is Right for 35 years. Man, and I, I loved him. Wasn't wasn't he sued by one of the women who worked on? Yep, Price is Right. Yep, for getting a little handsy. <laughs> Somebody forgot to spay or neuter Bob. Huh? <laughs> yeah, this picture's not helping him out in that case. Look at this one, old promo yeah. shot. Well, they had some. <laughs> <laughs> they had some what, George? Some interesting co host on that show. In 1994, Diane Parkinson filed a lawsuit against Barker alleging sexual harassment following a three year affair that they had. Mm. Oh. <laughs> uh, she later dropped it. So, dropped. Uh, in 1995, oh, God. model Holly Hallstrom oh. left The Price is Right and later filed suit against Barker. Oh. Mm. So. What? Anyway. Al alleging the reason she oh, was fired was not so much because of her 14-pound medication-mediated weight gain as documented, but because, to Barker's displeasure, she refused to give false information to the media regarding Parkinson's lawsuit. Hmm. Barker countersued for slander. <laughs> Again, for the family here yes, today. We, we so. want to focus on some other things that, that <laughs> In your October grandfather was a of part of. 2007, Deborah oh God, Curling, still happening. assigned to The Price is Right, a CBS employee filed a lawsuit against CBS and Bob Barker, oh God. <laughs> claiming that she was forced to quit her job after testifying against Barker in a wrongful termination lawsuit. Mm. Brought about by a previous show producer. Okay, those last two weren't handsy stuff. Yeah. He wasn't the one that made some young woman that he was hitting on bust up his fecal matter that was stopping up a toilet, right? No. What? Again, to the family on the front row. <laughs> no, that's not even we don't know story. where this gentleman is going with this story. That was Charlie Rose. Oh. Remember that story yes. about Charlie yes. Rose? Okay. And he, I tried he to tried it. to seduce some woman. At his apartment, and when she turned down his advances, he asked her if she could at least help him with a stopped-up toilet. Yeah, weird. And you're telling me all those years, yeah, that's the best possible microphone for him to use. That yeah, real we long were, one with the. I was always disturbed by that microphone. I too. was too. It seems like just a horrible form factor for a microphone. <laughs> or was it elegant looking? It was like the size of a baton. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He worked it well, though. He did. He had a great voice. I guess it was Good where he could guy. mic someone far away from him. Uh, maybe so. But why didn't they have lavs back then or overhead mics? Yeah, I wish we knew. That's a good look, though. The The girls he's posing with in this photo. It's got to be from the mid-70s. Yeah, maybe. I got mm -hmm. that Braniff stewardess look happening. 
What do you think Bob oh, yeah. Barker's net worth was at the time of his okay, passing? 30 years. The time of his untimely passing. Yes. The time of his untimely passing choosing. $40 million. That's my, uh, my final uh, answer. See if the price is right. That much. <laughs> I'll guess $1. Okay. Ooh. In Price is Right form, you guys have guessed, and George is correct, because the answer is seventy million. No way wow. for Bob Barker at the time of his retirement. There's no way those women didn't get any of that. Yeah, they may have got some on the side. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> well, when that one case settled, then she drop it again to the family. And and what was the Sorry. what was the thing he would call out someone's name from the audience and then say, "Come on down." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, the and announcer would do that. Motioning towards his crotch. No, he didn't oh. do that. The announcer did that. Okay. Rod, Rod Roddy, Riley. What was the guy's Rowdy name? Rowdy Roddy Piper. Rod something. God, that's a great song too. Yeah. Those games they played on that show were wheels off. There was that one skier dude who would climb up the the mountain and try not to oh, fall uh, off. Yeah, is that the one where they'd play the yodel? Yeah. <laughs> Rod Roddy was the announcer's name. Yeah, who said, "Come on down." Yeah, there's the song. Great. Uh, Rod Roddy passed away in he, 2003. He w- oh, wow! Oh, that was his real name. He was born in Fort Worth. Oh, so to the family, George has an accusation. Well, sorry, it doesn't sound like a real name, does it? And then Drew Rod Carey Roddy? took Robert over. Robert Ray Roddy. Okay. Drew Carey took over for Bob Barker, right? Yeah. He's no Bob. Parker. Okay, so no, Bob's big thing was, and you get a new car, or was that Rod Roddy that said that too? I think he ran down the prizes too. So Rod Bob had yeah. no signature phrases other than "spay and neuter your co-host." No, he had to keep it, you know, introduce the item and what's the price. Hmm. Hi, I'm wasn't, Bob Barker. Wasn't spay and neuter your co-host? Uh, okay, <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. All right, Rod Roddy buried in Fort Worth. Really? Yeah. Greenwood Memorial Park. We should visit his grave. He had a very pleasant voice. You know, who else is buried in Fort Worth? Lee Harvey Oswald. What? <laughs> why is, <laughs> how are you thinking? I don't understand why you're... <laughs> Plinko, punch a bunch. These are all people pair, buried in Fort Worth? Pushover. <laughs> pass Let's go the to Pushover's buck, grave. <laughs> pay the rent, three strikes, danger price, and cover up. Those were the games? Yeah. What was the one with the those. yodeling mountain man? Was that? That wasn't Plinko, was it? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Gosh, I hate that show was on all the time when we'd spend these incredibly long summers at my grandparents' house. What my grandmother would watch that Price is Right, and then she'd have to watch her stories, which tied up the TV <laughs> for about three hours. And so are the days of our lives. I always got so nervous by those theme songs. There's one with the piano. See if you can find Days of Our Lives theme song. Was that the Tyler? Bum, 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 bum. Oh, it just bum, made me bum, 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 bum. It's all depressing sounding. Just a bunch of adult drama I didn't want to be a part of as a kid. <laughs> Wait, that's what? Heenan's way. <laughs> <laughs> Days of our lives. That's what we're looking for. <laughs> Close. Why do you think Bob Barker needed more than oh, one yeah, signature that, phrase? That does make you nervous. See? Yeah, I hated that. Through the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. Creepy. <laughs> All creepy. What was the one with the what piano was your question, there? Junior? Why does Gordo think Bob Barker needed more than one signature phrase? Yeah. He didn't have any signature phrases. Spay and neuter your pets. That's not a that's not a good signature phrase. That's not there's no excitement surrounding that. It was serving a like, purpose though. Rowdy Roddy Piper had the come on down and a new car and those are great phrases. Well you've been in broadcasting thirty years. What's your signature phrase? I'm against myself. You don't have one. Stand I stand with those me. who stand against me. I stand with those who stand against me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, then you only have one. I have lots of them. <laughs> Radio Vag- Superstar coming through. I'm not Vagil Slice strong. Born Born. Oh, gosh. Yeah, you can have that one. <laughs> Robert J. O'Neill was arrested. You know who he is? His name ring a bell? 
R.J. O'Neill, Bob O'Neill, Bobby O'Neill. No. no. In 2014, he announced that he was the one who fired the shots that killed Osama bin Laden. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, and he was arrested in Frisco last week on two misdemeanor charges. Hey, guys. Uh, he is 47 years of age. He was uh, released the same day that he was arrested, but I think it was for um, sports and other in- Bald other things public Thanks intox lot, and assault causing bodily injury and it was confirmed he was in frisco to record a uh, album yeah record an album <laughs> be on some radio show mm. but yeah now the u.s military has not confirmed or denied o'neill's story that he was the guy who shot Bin then Laden. he takes some heat for doing that yeah you're not supposed to re- yeah one rule of Bin Laden Kill Club. Don't say is you, you don't did talk it. about Bin Laden Kill Club, right? But he talked about it, so that's a slight breach of protocol. You'd have to tell your closest friends, wouldn't you? I don't think you would. Man, I got the kill shot. What? Don't tell anybody. What? I got the kill shot on Bin Laden. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, that's cool, Robert. Hey, did you hear Robert got the kill <laughs> shot on Bin Laden? <laughs> Shh. I told you not to tell anyone. Well, I just told my closest friend. That's okay. <laughs> That's the way it works. Everyone always yeah, thinks yeah. that it just goes, I just told my closest friend. I trust them. Yeah. Yeah, but do you trust the person that that person trusts? <laughs> yeah, he wrote a memoir called The Operator that detailed some of his funniest phone calls of trying to make overseas calls. Oh, he's a, yeah, did prank calls. <laughs> uh, he's part of uh, Navy SEAL Team 6. Very elite. Those are bad dudes. Very elite group. And he published that book in 2017. It's on the New York Times bestseller list. But he got a little... Had a few. Yeah, had a few pops in Frisco and Started got arrested. Started about the yeah. pop and Bin Laden. Did you hear it? <laughs> we already did it. We don't have to kill Bin Laden anymore because we already did it. He, was that Bobby Hull or Brett Hull? Brett. Brett. Okay. Uh-oh, what? Oh, George is oh, coughing. Was, I was coughing. You right? Yeah, I'm great. You still struggling with that? I, I'm getting better. I feel better today than I've felt in probably 27 days. 27 years. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. Airfares at DFW Airport have gone up 20% in a year. Mm. I believe it. It's more expensive to fly. I just say it like that. I don't know. I got hair Merrill voice. <laughs> Guess what percentage of flights from Dallas, both of their big airports, are Southwest and American Airlines? Those two combined. What percentage? Wow. Mm. I bet it's 75, 80%. Yeah, I was going to say 80%. This is more than 85%. Wow. Oh, just over 85%. 5,000 pilots are suspected of hiding major health issues, but most are still flying. What? That's concerning. (laughs) Yeah. The federal authorities have been investigating about 5,000, I think it's around 4,800 pilots, that are suspected of falsifying their medical records to conceal the fact that they were receiving benefits for mental health disorders and other serious conditions that can make them unfit to fly. Hmm. So a lot of these are collecting benefits. A lot of them, I think, are former veterans that are collecting benefits for disabilities. Mm-hmm. So it makes them unfit to, I guess, serve militarily, but yet they're saying that they're still okay to fly. So it's kind of a, the accusation, I guess, is that they're double dipping. Right. That hmm. when it comes to military, I can't fly. My vision isn't good enough. Like, I just can't do it, Dad. And then they go and take a private job flying. Hmm. That's the claim anyway. Now, the tricky one is mental health disorders. Like, I've always felt like there... I don't know the solution to this, but I do know that there's some kind of problem here because if you're in a job that you would immediately get disqualified for if you had depression suicidal or, thoughts yeah anything like that then that discourages you for getting help for those issues right because you don't want to lose your job yeah so there's got to be some way to 
make it through there where people can get help if they need it without losing their entire career that they built. Yeah, that's a tough one. When you get on a commercial flight, do you guys size up the pilots? Yeah, I always look to see to. if they look like they've been arguing with the spouse late that yeah. night for or something like that. See <laughs> so if their hair's messed up. Yeah. Just, hey, man. hey, pilot, how are you doing? Hey, I'm fine. Just find a seat anywhere. I don't care, man. <laughs> Most definitely. That guy makes me a little bit worried. Oh, well. I will say 99% of the time, they look pretty squared away yeah. and chipper mm-hmm. and they're ready to sharp. Go. Yep. 99% of the time, I feel really good about it. Yeah, I was getting on this flight. The actually, it was two flights ago that I took, and the pilot was standing there, you know, greeting everyone. Hi, how you doing? How are you doing? He was real talkative and everything. It looked like he had just eaten a powdered donut and forgot to wipe <laughs> off his face. I don't know what was happening there. Could you imagine if you look in there and Gordo's your pilot? Where are we oh flying again? God. Sorry, I'm flying. Yeah. Sorry. Just, uh, uh, what's uh, what's the story? What kind of plane uh, is this again? Crap. Sorry. Which button to have pushed first? Uh, Which one is it? I'm so sorry. Hold on, I got to eat some whipped cream. <laughs> I've never said, hold on, I've got to eat some whipped Hang cream on, ever in my life. let get this working and we'll take off. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, a new method of execution. A guy named Kenneth Eugene Smith, age 58, he's in Alabama on death row. Alabama! He, we didn't need Keith Jackson no. to tell us where this guy was on death row. excited. But he is set to die by nitrogen. He murdered a preacher's wife in 1988, and his co-defendant in that case, who was also convicted of the crime, was put to death in 20 put to death in 2010. And now it's Kenneth Smith's time. Actually, I think they tried to execute him by lethal injection last year, but it was called off because they had problems getting the IV into his veins. Mm. That's always weird. It almost seems like if they don't successfully execute you that time. You get a free pass. It, yeah, there's no, there's, you can't yeah. do double jeopardy on it. <laughs> but yeah, they were, he had to say, eat his final meal and say his prayers to the devil and everything. Man. And then they're trying to jam the needle into his arm and in between his toes and in his peen. No. They tried every which way to get the needle in. They couldn't do it. So they had to call it off. And then now he's going to be killed with nitrogen. So why are they doing that? Because they've run out of those drugs for lethal injection. And so now they've approved this new method of nitrogen, I guess, you know, epoxia, hypoxia. What's it called? Where you, you can't put breathe? it to the air? Then, Is Alabama a state <laughs> where you put it on a mask and put it on him? I don't know how it put works. Put it on a hot dog. You put the nitrogen on a hot dog, <laughs> and then you make them breathe okay, it. Well, you trick him. Have one more yeah. hot dog. Hey, it's just a hot dog. <laughs> Here, go ahead. Smell that hot dog. I wonder if Alabama is one of those states where you can choose your method. Like some states still have firing We're squad. We're getting your, your execution. execution. <laughs> Alabama has come up with a, a fantastic way of getting your execution in this world. <laughs> where <laughs> <laughs> Oklahoma and Mississippi have also authorized nitrogen hypoxia. Hmm. All right, but then. they have not used it yet, so... This guy is supposed to be be killed for for death of death of Samaj No, uh, I think uh, in November. Okay, I think it's somewhere. Yeah. Birthdays. Birthdays today. Friend. Sonny Schroyer from Dukes of Hazard and Enos is eighty-eight. I think that was Enos himself. Was Enos an uncomfortable name? Ooh. Yes, Enos. Barbara Bach is 77. Ah, Bach. I still don't even understand that joke. Mash Only fans, Rich Phillips does. Mash fans get it. Daniel Stern, 66. NBA popularity. Greatness. He was in Breaking Away. Jennifer Coolidge, 62. Funny. Shania Twain, 58. That's George's... Uh, yeah. uh, favorite there weren't you at a concert of hers yeah you can see me just standing out like bigfoot <laughs> <laughs> jack black of tenacious d is 54 the hardline's own or him. soon to be own jack black jason Priestley is 54 years of age as well we have jake owen the country singer turning 42 so as so is leanne rhymes turning 41 okay. oh she's turning 41 not 42 army hammer 37 what do you know about him? I thought it was Arm and Hammer. 
That was his great granddad. Oh. Honey Boo Boo turns 18. <laughs> you better redneck neck and eyes. And Ron Guidry is 73. Wow. Louisiana Lightning? Yep. You're up to date. 24 and 3 that year for the Yankees, I think. Mm. Something like that. You sound sure of it. All right, thanks. That's Muse. But we've been talking a lot about the Cowboys this morning. Jerry Jones makes the deal on Friday for Trey Lance. He's now their third string quarterback. The deal with the 49ers, and they played on Saturday. So joining us now on the ticket hotline is the owner and GM to talk about these items. Good morning, Jerry. Hey, good morning. I'm sorry. I'm a little bit distracted here. What's going on? Oh, I'm watching the screen. Oh, you're watching game uh, game film? No, Jerry Jr. and I are watching Trash Truck. It's a kid's show. <laughs> yeah, I've seen Trash Truck. That show's yeah. awesome. Yeah, he likes to watch it. And now that we've had to... Uh, Pull him out of school, uh, regular school, until we can get him caught up with his classmates. He's tagging along with me to work. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> while, his, while his mom is off in the Greek Isles with Captain Rex, the shirtless wonder, as she calls him. <laughs> yeah, she really likes it that, uh, that he captains the Bravo Eugenia wearing only a captain's hat and a Speedo. Okay, look, we don't <laughs> need to know about all that. <laughs> Says it really gets her eggs moving again. We need to talk football <laughs> yeah. with you. Because she's frustrated with me. Well, Is that's she? too bad. Yeah, you know, because it takes me like 10 Viagra before I can even get a half chub going. Okay. That's, hey, you know, it's don't, we're, we're on the air right now, Jerry, on the air. It's like thumbing silly, silly putty into the end of a garden hose or something. Bingo. It's just well, like a bingo, bingo. But we anyway, don't have... let's talk football. Yeah, let's talk football. Yeah, where should we start? There's so much going on. What about the trade you made for Trey Lance? Well, I'm excited. I'm excited. I think it was necessary, and uh, it was very uh, important to a lot that goes on. I mean, this is – look, it's finally here. We're at the beginning of the Jerry Jones Memorial last season, okay? <laughs> oh, so, so we need to get a Super Bowl this season. I, I'm I'm just not feeling like I'm long for this world. Wow. You know, I'm getting up there in age. And, well, uh, and I was very encouraged, very encouraged that we beat uh, them Vegas Raiders yesterday. Yeah, I mean, and I know a lot of people. <laughs> a lot of people are uh, are wondering uh, why we're getting rid of that Will Greer after they saw him play so well yesterday. But uh, two days ago, <laughs> two days ago. Uh, but uh, but yeah, he those people great. obviously aren't fishermen. Now, I know Jeb, you're a fisherman, and you know what you do when you uh, catch an impressive fish, don't you? Uh, well, I guess it depends if we're keeping them or not. No, but. no, you release it. That's what you do. You release it back into the wild, and that's what we did with Will Greer. <laughs> <laughs> we okay. released it. So, uh, uh, but people were so focused on Will Greer's performance uh, yesterday plus one day that uh, <laughs> that they didn't pay attention to our other quarterback's great performance. Your other quarterback's Oh, Dak calling the plays? All day hell of a game. <laughs> I think we found his true calling. You think? Uh, he clearly should be a coordinator and not an interception machine on the field during the games. <laughs> oh, man. Well, you, you've done that before, moving a quarterback straight to a coordinator and Kellen Moore, so... Yeah. So maybe, uh -huh. are you saying Dak can be Trey Lance's coordinator? I think so. I think so. I mean, look, move uh, move Dak to offensive coordinator, and I got this genius move that I made getting that Trey Lance. And I love that. Uh, love surprising my head coach and players without the blue GM and like that. <laughs> See, I'm a guy who's big into strategicality. Okay. Uh, it's strategicality. That's when you're very impressive when it comes to strategicals. <laughs> and and as any general or admiral will tell you, one of the most important strategies that you can use is that element of surprise. And that's what I used. I used that element of surprise okay. GM but, to get get a new Dak Prescott contract leverage tool. That's what I'm calling Trey Lance. <laughs> <laughs> but you said this preseason you believe in Dak. Yeah, I believe he can um, get the ball to the opposing team about three or four times a game. <laughs> <laughs> Man. I know, but that, I, hey, look, let's see if Trey can give it to me Lance this year. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, he's my Super Bowl insurance. You know, if something happens to Dak, I need somebody who uh, I feel good about. And I chose us my hand, hand-picked him. Okay. Hand-picked him. Well. In fact, with the Giants here in about, Two weeks. Yeah. We 
we may rotate Dak and Trey Lance. What do you think about that? Rotating quarterbacks. Wow. I, I don't see know. what Lance can do. Uh, yeah, we'll, that sounds we'll, crazy. We'll platoon them. Uh, we'll platoon. Didn't we do that with Pelour and somebody else a long time ago? <laughs> I think it was Stallback and Morton a long time ago. <laughs> That's who I'm thinking of. That's yeah. right. But, no, I do believe in Dak when it comes to uh, – you know, taking the over on interceptions per game. Oh, my gosh, Jerry. It, which me and Phil yeah. Mickelson often do. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I'm excited. Everybody's excited. Everyone's Let's go excited. Cowboy fans. It's the Jerry Jones Memorial last season. Let's get it on. Okay, that's what we're calling on. it, I guess. Let's get it on, baby. <laughs> Good morning. All right, we'll see you. Good morning. There goes Jerry. <laughs> Uh, last week, were we talking about plastic on furniture and plastic on the carpet and everything? There's a new episode of uh, John Wilson, How To with John Wilson. Do you guys watch that? No. It's produced no. by Nathan Fielder. Really? Nathan with you fame. Yeah. Nathan for you. Is it a comedy? Yeah, it, it is. It's a. It's kind of a weird, interesting show. Was which... Nathan for you a comedy? Stop it. <laughs> John! Why do you like doing this to us? Things that we hold precious and dear, and you just make fun of them. I'm sorry. Kind of like how you... But then again, you get mad at us for doing fake Ronald Reagan voice, and Ronald Reagan's your biggest personal hero. I don't know if he's my biggest personal hero, and I really don't get mad at you for doing fake Ronald Reagan. (laughs) I think you've jumped in on fake Ronald Reagan, haven't you? Well, maybe. Well, mommy... Put the plastic on the couch. Put the plastic on the couch and get out those tatas. All right. Or, I thought that that was a Ronald Reagan quote. Hey, no. no one of it his, was not. One of his States of the Union Never speeches. Was. Mr. Gorbachev, get out those tatas. <laughs> Mr. Gorbachev, get out your one big tata. Gorbachev had one big boob in the middle of his chest. <laughs> I believe Nancy Reagan had breast it, cancer. It, uh, oh, oh. Uh, I was, I was very unaware but of that. It was before you that. guys yeah, are. Was, I'm so sorry. We're sorry. Did Gorbachev have it too? And his one big one? No, but somebody said this morning that Rod Roddy had it. Price is Right announcer. Had breast cancer? Yeah. You know, Montel Williams had breast cancer. Yep. Mm-hmm. He's really the only famous guy that I know that had it. Now Rod Roddy. Well, yes. I guess so. Who's Rod Roddy for those that are just joining just us? just said the Price is Right who, announcer. Who, who's the Price is Right? <laughs> Still on. That makes me nervous, that song. Really? Yeah. It's like there's urgency for feels like there's urgency for me to get out of my seat and get down to the stage. <laughs> Have you seen the video circulating of Aaron Paul being called down to the stage for Price is Right? No, no. he was on it yeah. before he's famous? Yeah, I'll retweet that. Yeah, Mr. White. Pretty wild. Huh. He's such a spaz too when he gets called down. <laughs> uh let's see. Hmm. Let's go with this one from P one Amy. She says that lady who yelled at you, Gordon, about the door sounded like she was in a bad mood and you shouldn't feel bad. Even if she thought you had seen her, once you apologized, she should have been gracious. This is based on the story that I told in the O-Deck of something uncomfortable that happened up here when I was going outside the door, was leaving the, the station, and I didn't think there was anyone behind me in the hallway, and... I left the door and went through the door, and then I hear back behind me, you're not going to hold the door open for me? <laughs> wow. Just wow. <laughs> Genius. And I said, oh, oh I'm, I'm so sorry. And I just hear, just wow, one more time. So and sad. so I, you know, I waited for her to go to the restroom and then come back out, and then I apologized to her once again. Girls don't understand this pressure. We, f- we feel the pressure to open those doors and to keep them open and it brings up the question or to not open them because or to not you open get yelled at for, not, for opening them i can open my own doors thank you i'm so sorry so sorry just whatever tell me the right thing how long do you wait if you're holding a door and like say the person is 
15, 20 feet away, you just let it shut, thinking, hey. Yeah, Larry David did that, too. <laughs> but Yeah, because I've been caught in that before, where where I'm holding the door open for someone. They're like 20 feet away from the front door of a place. I'm holding it open for them, and then they, I see them dawdling. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going to go on in. And then they act pissed at me. There's just there's no winning with people. No. Uh, but Amy continues. She says, I have a, a Samsung Smart TV, parentheses, Q Vivaldi. <laughs> there are random channels that show the same show back to back to back, and there's one channel that plays only old episodes of The Price is Right. Yeah, what is that? It's not the Game Show Network, but it's actually a Price is Right channel, like dedicated really? Price is Right channel. I don't know about that, but there's something where it's like over the air channels and they just play like old programs like wait broadcast channels it's got to be yeah hmm you don't have I've, it on your smart tv i have you turn not it on, been somehow you'll get to that function and it's like when a, when have you gone to broadcast tv i'm telling you it's you by have accident an antenna. It's, it's no i don't have an antenna that's the thing i think that's what she's talking about i think you're time traveling so I'll you're ta- saying I'll this is not a streaming channel can't it's not, be. It's not cable or streaming. I don't it's think so. Broadcast channel. It's got to be, huh? But it's a broadcast channel that only plays The Price Is Right. No, yeah, I think <laughs> I'm with George on this. It's o- old programs. You yeah, know yeah. Old all of a sudden, programs. McMillan and wife would be up there, and you're like, "How did I get on this?" Wife. On my TV, it'll be like channel four point three or seven point eight. If you're just going, so it's up digital like, channels. Yes, okay. I believe okay. so. That is over the air, but it's the secondary and tertiary channels of broadcast yeah how many people can be watching those channels i wonder that too are they i've only stumbled upon well, it by half accident. the people up here apparently on this show are watching it i don't watch it i just stumble on it. it's like okay i, I do know I what you're talking about input. though now yeah. because we do we have one small tv that's on an antenna mm-hmm. at our house Thanks. and it's got those digital channels like you're talking about dj channel 4.3 and they do broadcast so weird heavy. stuff but are you telling me that those stations sell ad- enough advertising? I don't know. On those random stations? I've never stuck around to see if they go to a commercial or not. Maybe they run them all the way through. I don't know. Weird. Still think you're time traveling. <laughs> I might be. Amy continues. She says, I was sick a couple weekends ago and watched like 10 episodes of The Price is Right in a row. And these were shows from 1984. Said the cars and the other prizes were hilarious. You know, because they're okay, saying, I a new car! Out. And you're looking at this thing that's <laughs> so out of date now. But she says, Bob Barker was truly a real horn dog. She yeah. could tell? Yes. Whoa. Any young blonde contestant garnered a comment from him. <laughs> and there were a couple times that the models were sitting with the and let me complete the phrase. The slits in their skirts. Okay. Riding up. And he always had to comment on it. Really? Yeah. Why don't we remember that? I don't know. I made a comment earlier tonight. <laughs> like, we always remember that about Richard Dawson. Yeah, he Who was the host of Family everybody. Feud. He would always kiss yeah. women on the lips. Also, would, hello, love. Also on Uncle Baby Billy's Bible Bonkers. Yeah, you got to invest in this <laughs> Uncle Baby Billy Bible Bonkers. Now, come on now. Your ticket. It's going to be your ticket to fame. Now, come on now. Uh, speaking of prices, right? Did you know that Bob Barker and Betty White were in a long term feud? 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 Yeah. Mm-mm. Yeah, they were in a fight over an elephant. Huh. <laughs> because elephant. B- Bob Barker wanted Billy the Elephant, which is a funny name for an elephant. Yes. Billy the Elephant at the L.A. Zoo to be released to a sanctuary. <laughs> and oh. Betty White, I guess, was a board member of the L.A. Zoo for decades. And when it came up time, they were going to re- renovate the elephant enclosure. And uh, and Bob Barker and Cher and Lily Tomlin were against it because they felt like they he should be relocated to a sanctuary and not have new digs at the L.A. Zoo. 
So they fought, and they the rumors are they wouldn't even appear on the same award shows together. Wow, over the elephant. Oh, because yeah, so a moron elephant fighting over the. Never knew that. Yes, a pachyderm. Mm. Um. P1 Steve has a good point when he was commenting on our story and muse about the new form of execution that Alabama is going to try out, where they're going to kill a guy with nitrogen, make it's a him nitrogen breathe. bomb, make no, make him breathe with not, <laughs> <laughs> make him breathe nitrogen until he, until he's unalive anymore. What? Steve brings up this point. He says, I don't understand this running out of the execution drug business. You can walk by someone that looked at fentanyl and they die. And we seem to have a surplus of it in this country with countless amounts seized by law enforcement. We can't check some of that out of the evidence locker and send it down to the execution department? It's not hmm. approved. Why Why can't fentanyl be used for that purpose? Is it too painful of a death? Fentanyl? No. I'm asking. I you don't know. You feel like Jesus I'm right never, before you die. I've never died from it. <laughs> no, you it feel up a good point. wonderful. That's why you stop breathing. It's because life is so good, you just you can't even be troubled to breathe. So should that be our new lethal drug of choice? That's what Steve is saying. Butter-flavored it- fentanyl. <laughs> why did he say that? But since these people are being punished, do you not want them to experience euphoria before they pass? Well, but the thing is, is that they are not, they're worried about the lethal injection drug because they're afraid that those guys feel pain before they pass. Mm-hmm. But you so want we them to obviously are feel euphoria. Yes. These people that did the most heinous crimes. Okay. The they're heinous. about to have... An eternity of not feeling that way as they go to hell and they become the devil's real doll. They will have a moment of euphoria and then they go into Satan's red room. Let's slow down this conversation. There would be many Americans, many of your fellow Americans that don't want them to feel that euphoria. I know, but we are also, we want to execute people humanely in this country <laughs> which is weird a weird stance that we take i don't know maybe fentanyl will be the drug of choice for this in five years who knows stop wrapping me up you're trying to wrap me up <laughs> don't don't think i don't spot it <laughs> uh and then uh, this from uh, p1 anonymous he says i am a current airline pilot who formerly flew in the military also commenting on the Muse story about how they're syncing up the databases between the VA and the FAA and finding out that a lot of pilots that fly and are authorized by the FAA are on disability from the VA. So it would disqualify them from, you would think, from flying. He says, uh, the story about pilots hiding medical issues didn't really paint the correct picture. What's happening is when pilots leave the military, we're given an exit physical where we can claim any issues that we are having. This exam plays a big role in how much VA disability we receive. Because of this, some of us might exaggerate a minor issue to receive compensation. When completing an FAA physical, we're supposed to disclose any claims we had for VA disabilities, but some don't for fear that they won't be allowed to fly an airline job. The VA and FAA medical databases used to be separate and not be able to talk to each other, and we really depended on that as pilots. <laughs> uh oh. But now they can, so uh Well that's sorry, there's veterans out there who really need that. And if you just have a very small, maybe unrelated ailment, you shouldn't claim that. George, when there's government money involved. These pilots need their fudge rounds, man. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Nostalgia. I said last week, I thought one of the greatest band, uh, greatest album titles, Future Nostalgia by Dua Lipa. Mm-hmm. Listen to that album again recently. It's good songs, and She's then there's great. other songs that are, you know, yeah, I kind of heard this in the other songs, though. It's okay. It's covering a lot of the same Is she guy. out That's front right. singing them? They're great. 
Okay, I, I hate the way that you... I think she's a great singer. You go full Bob Barker for Dua Lipa. <laughs> I did not know I was going to say that sentence today. <laughs> By the way, a lot of P1s tweeted at her this weekend that the Bird Dogs offered to open for her. That would be the worst pairing it would. ever. Still That's what I tweeted to her. Don't do it. It's a bad <laughs> idea. Who am more nostalgic, men or women? Men. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, I'm going to say men. Why do you say that? I don't know. Okay. Uh, At least I don't he's know. honest. I hear or- more men talking about the old days yeah. than I do women. Women don't really sit around and talk about the good old days, do they? Like They're guys too busy do. bitching about the present. We yeah. like history. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. It's just a joke. We're having fun. Everything's cool. <laughs> we, uh, guys we appreciate are, history a little bit more, I think. Whoa. Well, we what? do. I don't know. And guys That's are always true. talking about their high school football team, yeah. their college Coach intramural basketball in. team that right. went three and four one yeah, year. Yeah, we went three and four one year. Mm-hmm. Well, researchers have found that men are more nostalgic than women. So your intuitions were correct. Yep. They found that 51% of men across all generations judge music from their youth to be better than today's music, compared with only 41% of women saying the same thing. Check. 31% of men also preferred TV and movies from earlier eras, compared with 22% of women. 46% of men rate public figures from the past, politicians, celebrities, whatnot, more highly than those of today compared with 44% of women. So that's a little bit closer, but still not as many women percentage-wise as men. So yeah, this is according to the an expert on nostalgia. Generic. Christine Batshow. (laughs) Batshow? That's too close to the other word. She's bat show crazy. She says nostalgia can reflect dissatisfaction with the present, and men have often viewed cultural changes less favorably than women. Yeah, you can see that. So maybe that factors into why men are more nostalgic. I thought that was interesting that there is a gender difference on nostalgia. Yeah, that makes sense to me. But I didn't think we were supposed to talk about that. What? You always try to claim that we're all the same. We are all about the it. same in God's eyes and in culture's eyes and in, in yeah, everybody's you eyes. You can't cover. Forget and it. in Bat Show's eyes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bat Show. <laughs> Although a famous man once said the worst conversation is the one that starts Remember When. Yeah, Tony Soprano yeah. said that. Whatever happened to him? He didn't like talking about the past. He bought it. You think he died at the end? Yeah. I think he, I did, think he too. did too. Yeah. Somebody walked into that pizza parlor and offed him. You know, it's so interesting how that show <laughs> seems to have nailed the ending of a series. Yes. Shows even though rarely do even that. though we were left with a huge question mark, it was a fantastic ending to it. Yeah. And Game of Thrones just tanked their ending so much so that no one even really talks about Game of Thrones anymore. So that's came why in and shot the dragon at the end. That's why George and I didn't watch it because right. we knew they'd tank the ending. When we the game they'd... of when when the dragon put in the uh, the quarter and played some Journey at the diner, and was kind of looking around, breathing fire onto his coffee to heat it up a little bit. All right, Gordo, thank you. That's the corner. Get the steak podcast at patreon.com slash sportsgreek. Once again, The Ticket presents Why Today Doesn't Suck. I was eating wasabi by itself. I like to get it on my chopstick and suck it off. And now, here are your hosts, Sean Bass and David Mino. The Little League World Series is finally over, I think. Who won? America. California. Not America. Damn right, America America won. won. Always. On a walk-off homer. Good. We had a watch party yesterday. It was lit. (laughs) It's David Mino, it's Sean Bass, the 1 to 3 program, and at 3 o'clock, it's Jay King. Thanks, David. Here's Monty. Thank you, Jay King. We say hello to Bob and Corby and the one show that could single-handedly, in one hour of programming, force us to 
extend our delay by about a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all had a hell of a about Friday. A minute. I'm really bummed I missed Friday. It sounds like that it was a lot of fun on that last half or hour and a half. Yeah, they were crushing. We got a lot of killer. Really got a lot yeah. of breaking news too. <laughs> we're gonna win the NIT. <laughs> Dude, you're gonna get the full sweep, I think. Had Jeff Wilson on to talk uh, Trey Lance. Yep. Had half a JD, and you can hear him. <laughs> it was a great show. Well, today is Monday, August the 28th, the 240th day of 2023. There are 125 days left. On this date in 1918, mm. 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 Indians player Tris Speaker physically Guardians. assaults an umpire and is suspended for the rest of the MLB season. They were just so wild ass back then. Beating up umps. Being racist. <laughs> well, there's some of that. Or just try a bit of that. With your bat. At least they didn't try and scalp him. Did Tris Speaker hold some form of okay. triples record? I saw when I was looking him up that they said his glove was the triple eraser. Maybe that's what it is. How could you be no, a triple? Do a triple were triples eraser. that he frequent? The guy, he has didn't have a fence. Yeah, it just kept rolling down the That's street. That's true. <laughs> yeah, it just kept going into the woods. He still has the career record for doubles. Doubles. Okay. See? It's close. I but he was notorious too. off the field because his nickname was Tris Threesome Speaker. He got the That's what his baseball ball. reference page says. That's that's right. I thought the Jensen brothers I had, had the doubles tonight. records. Did you just bum, make bum, a bum, tennis bum, reference joke to the gonna be about bum, tennis. Jensen brothers? <laughs> Don't celebrate that. You mean the Bryan it. brothers? Weren't the, weren't the Jensen's in their oh. 90s? Weren't they their age with the hair? No? Did I just make that up? Jensen's. Today Meet the Jensen's. Them. Don't ever mention them. They didn't do anything. <laughs> They had hair. Right. They made why today doesn't they were the, suck they in twenty twenty two. They were the uh, Luke and Murphy Jensen. Yeah, the Europe of of tennis players or the Nelson brothers. Where's Just Jack Sock and all of this? You, Still playing. Just wants to impress you, Corby. I, I looked up can't. Tris Speaker. Also, apparently, when he became manager, he uh, piloted the platoon system in baseball. So before that, if a lefty came up and you had a lefty at bat, well, you were just screwed, best dude. Best of luck. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Better luck next time. Like, wish wait, there wait, was wait, something wait, I wait. could do. There's a righty on our bench. What if I bring him in? <laughs> Never work. And they all just, <laughs> your heads exploded. Uh, in 1955, Jay. This won't be racist. A 14-year-old Mississippi boy named Emmett Till. Yep. Oh, no. Mm. Oh, boy. Was brutally murdered that. after allegedly flirting with a white woman. Don't do that in a small town. Just leave out brutally you, and just say murdered. Or north of Richmond. Yep. <laughs> it's not political, man. Why do you want to take out the brutal part? It's just redundant. You were murdered. Just tastefully murdered. murdered. Right. Tactfully. <laughs> Well, if it makes you feel any better, in 1963, some 200,000 people marched on D.C., which became a high point of the civil rights movement where Martin Luther King delivered the I Have a Dream speech. you damn right he did. Somebody here and might have... It's long since. Racism was solved. Is long that when he yeah, started the speech right with that I'll put a boot in your ass? <laughs> the American way. I had a dream last night that I had a boot in my ass. Because <laughs> right. we'll put a boot in your ass. It's the American way. Well, Uncle Sam, and it's going to be hell. Still going. Oh, now it, it never yeah. When Mother Freedom started ringing her bell, literal Hell chills. Yeah. Literal chills. Hell, I'm exhausted now. Hell yeah. <laughs> so, it's yeah. so tiring. Let's Listen go to, to war. That song. I'm ready. Oh. Well, he's got, he's got the Statue of Liberty uh, shaking yeah, her fist. Be a commander. Did you sing be that before or after you did your I Have a Dream speech in high school? Bob? I've never been able... Oh, yeah, the, the I Have a Dream speech was high school. Oh, absolutely. We did put a boot in your ass at Summer Bash like five years ago. It was kind of awesome. <laughs> 
1988, we had one of the deadliest air show accidents ever occur in Germany Mm. when three jets collided in midair, fell to the ground, and killed 69 people, injuring hundreds more. But they kept having air shows. Yeah, that was... 35 years ago. That's incredible. They're like, let's just keep rolling them out there. Roy Halliday, you get in one. (laughs) Is that the first time a threesome ended in a 69? Dave. Very nice. He's on fire. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Ended. Hey, Dave. But they were German. He's just right. like Jordan shrugging. What do you want? I mean, if they were Italian, you'd have to make his bunk. <laughs> In uh, 2009, British pop rock band Oasis was split up after Noel Gallagher quit the band, citing inability to get along with his brother Liam. That'll change. And they'll never be back. They'll iron it out in a few weeks. When the price is right, it'll happen. (laughs) Oh, yeah, they sing Curveball. Uh, In 2020, (laughs) actor Chadwick Boseman passed away from colon cancer. Way to go, Bob. Wakanda forever. Orchid. Orchid? Uh, Paul in... uh, What What color was colon cancer? Brown. How many of our major superheroes have passed what away? About semicolon cancer. Christopher Superman, Reeve. Superman. Adam Scott West. Reeve. Yeah. Adam West. Chadwick Boseman. Are the rest still alive? Have we had a Batman oh, die? Joker. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah that's right. Heath he Ledger. He was a superhero. Oh, my God. Though. I just, I can't believe, I'm so embarrassed I asked that he question. He was the bad guy, you incel. He was the he most was important a, superhero of the good guy. He was. He was good at heart. You know... No you know, heart. They say that forgetting about someone, first you spend one whole day and not thinking about it. And you can't believe that you did. And you did it with Heath Ledger, and I'm proud of you, Corey. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> one day. Yeah, but then Philip Seymour Hoffman died just a couple of years later. Dude, and it started what over. are we doing? Oh, oh. Yeah. Why do you got to bring all this stuff up on a Monday? Horrible. Bingo, bingo, bingo. And uh, one Jason year Rizbo. ago today. Murphy Brothers. <laughs> A Jensen Brothers, sorry. 1952 Mickey Mantle baseball card sold for $12.6 million, becoming the world's most expensive piece of sports memorabilia. And 17,000 people died of hunger. There's the Honus well. Wagner T206 and all this. I don't know. Some kids folks. That's how it works. All right, P1 birthdays today. This is from Brant. Hey, Monty. The employees at Apex Line Clearance would like to wish their boss, Clayton Love, a happy birthday. Mm. Other than the low wages, long hours, and poor morale, it's a pretty good place to work. Okay. Mm-hmm. Leaders are Chris Chris, Drop Request, Bob's Orgasm, listening to where Dave Raymond played golf. <laughs> Interesting. Did I... Uh, oh, did I is re- that a different one? Did I react? When I, I don't know. We... we so We're whenever he said that, that, whenever he said he played Monterey Peninsula, when he played at Cyprus, mm. or is it Cyprus? Yeah, Cyprus Hill. Yeah, <laughs> you had to change your underwear. Hey Monty, my name is Hernan, not Herman Munster. I want to wish my sister Annabelle a happy birthday. Her leaders are Doug Heffernan, Monty, and Crutches. She'd like to hear an L4G joke. Thank you. Mm. Stay hard. There's no way you have one of those handy. Well, th- you'd be wrong, Monty. Oh, okay. A uh, young girl was in the bath with her with her mom. Oh, God. And, and she says, what's this hairy thing, Mom? Oh. Boy. Mom says, oh, well, that is my sponge. Oh, yes, says the girl. The babysitter's got one. I've seen her washing Dad's face with it. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Explain if she's over 18, Corey, it's funny. Yes. It. Yeah. Oh, it's definitely. I don't get it, Bob. What happened? So neither the mom nor the babysitter shave. Interesting. Hmm. Again, let's hmm. the babysitter over it's a, 18. It's a sponge. Right. Yeah. She's like, why it's on there? Maybe. I don't know. How Older gal. big? Junior? Call him up. Come on now. Uh, hi there, Monty. I want to wish my husband a happy birthday. I did not wake him up in that special way because it's too early for that S. His leaders are Donovan's Doo Doo Bits, The Upper Decker, and Doing It Naked. 
drop request anyone bragging that from Lady P1 Stephanie, but did she, she did not put her husband's name in here. Mm. So it's your birthday, oh. and you're married to a chick named Stephanie that won't do that in the morning. Happy birthday. They, the list is long. To the club, bro. I like more government. <laughs> and look, I drove a pickup truck for X amount of years. <laughs> I think I prefer a woman. And so, yeah, if I crap myself three times a day, I know I'll still be all right. I sharp myself today. God. I, st- I think I still have my balls. I can go to bed on a plane really easily. <laughs> I spit on a kid. What? Wow. Grand Whoa. and great f- Mary and I have had the last five months. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Five months. That, that- yes. Yes, indeed. I don't have TikTok at all. I tried out for Liberty Hockey. Did he ask year. for everyone at the yeah, stations yeah. bragging? Let's yeah. Cover them all. yeah, let's not play every one of them. <laughs> I don't think I've ever <laughs> hugged a ticket. Save some for tomorrow, bro. Jay's just being the L all over the place. Yeah, let's do it. It's uh, time here. Good afternoon, Suck. Today is the 48th birthday of Clay. His claim to fame is buying Corby a beer at a hardline remote, and he knows the chick that slapped him. Fight night. Remember that? Again, get in line, bro. Would Me against her? You, yeah. Would she put you in your place? Yeah. How many countless P1s have bought you a beer at an event? Let's invite this her to fight guy. night as a special fight analyst. I'm sure she's on her, like, eighth divorce by now and probably at Trembling Hills and... Trying out new medication. Imagine life has not gone well for her. Stars. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where was she on Jan 6th? Uh, Clay's <laughs> leaders are the rant. Close. <laughs> Drop request. Anything from Irving Cares. Irving Cares, who joins me right now. Hi, Irving. Hello. Irving Cares will be on site today during the Camaro event, collecting food and cash donations. Yes, I will. I have a big burlap sack, and you can put all your donations in it. Especially the cans. Irving Cares is a nonprofit organization benefiting needy families in Irving. Oh, it's not a guy. No, I don't profit at all. So come out to Frank Parr Autoplex. I'll be there from 1 to 3 today. Are we going to have any uh, K-ticket CDs? Only at Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if Irving had the little armpit friend. No, Bruce. I, don't, I don't believe Bruce the Tick existed uh, at Bruce, that point. Bruce a little later. Yeah. <laughs> Only at Christmas. Only at Christmas Only is a Christmas. pretty good line. <laughs> yeah, pretty good placeholder there. Uh, birthdays today. Ron Guidry is 73. Yankee. Oh, no, Dan- last week? Daniel Stern, 66. Well, the Sticky week. Bandits. That's right. Or the Wet Bandits. Two movies. Check yeah. Wet Check Bandits was one. Sticky was two. Uh, we have... Three was just trash. Let's see, <laughs> Shania Twain is 58. Jennifer Coolidge, Stifler's mom, mm, 62. She's so great. Great in White Lotus. Jugs. Is she just the old lady that just drinks and talks about her mom? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. She's what the Greatest part about the show. She. They might call her a lot. Uh, let's see. There's a reason Corby's not here today. I'm here. If you guys oh. are wondering where he is, it's because Jack Black <gasps> is turning 54 today. Whoa. Whoa. Remember that time when it, Corby talked to Jack Black and, and yeah, it was and they really a, real, a really good interview? Man. Voice of Bowser. Looking forward to uh, our Tenacious D interview, whenever it may be. Mm-hmm. This next band. I mean, yeah, and as a thespian, to really like, you can never even tell it's Jack Black. Jack Black when he plays a role, you know what I mean. He just gets lost. The in role it. plays him. You know, I don't like your attitude, Monty. <laughs> what? I'm. You're reducing him to Danny McBride territory, and we all know <laughs> that it's it may be true, but it's pretty awesome. It's a good bit. I would never besmirch JB. Uh, Leanne Rhymes is 41. Ah, Garland. Jack Black <sighs> plays Othello. 
Army Hammer 37. Oof. Things Corby. not yeah. going well for Army Hammer. Didn't he want to eat somebody? Yeah, or I think weird? he's into cam- cannibalism. Eat yeah. Out. Oddly enough, that'll get you canceled. Mm. Or, or he threatened it. Just some slight cannibalism. Uh, Bismack Biombo 31. <laughs> Future Maverick. Yep. Mino, another countdown clock for you as Honey Boo Boo turns 18 today. Wow. Whoa. Mm. I don't even know. Who that. Wait, is the mom the one that it's like you're not going to believe what Honey yeah. Boo Boo's mom mm-hmm. looks like today? Oh, this, is, this is that big old fat girl. Okay. She's a big girl, sir. And uh, let's see, Bore on the Stay now dead. Jack Kirby, he's the other Marvel guy with Stan Lee. And then That's Dead right. on the Stay still dead. First one to draw the rhino. Bro. I am so sorry that I'm going to give you guys a distraught tie. Oh no, Ty. I, I, uh, I'm sorry that you have to deal with the four hours. I was wrestling Star Wars. Yeah. After that other guy died last week. <laughs> dead on this day, still dead, Ty. Kenny Baker. Mm-hmm. Kenny Baker. <laughs> Mr. Fuji. No! Oh, no. Hall of Fame manager. You think that's a racist character? Mr. Fuji? Why is it racist? Yeah, why is it going to be racist? Uh huh. <laughs> I know what's up with wrestling. Don't you think the Iron <laughs> Sheet needed a manager? So generic. <laughs> All right, Tyler. And that's why today doesn't <laughs> suck. Ha, 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 ha. Hi, Justin. Oh, oh, it Shut it down. Oh, Let's go. And off he goes. Well, my lead story, Bob just... Stole so the Ryder hey, Cup, yeah, ninety three <laughs> Ryder Cup. Uh, Bob Barker, jerk. Everyone knows he passed away over the weekend. It was the story of the Sochmead yesterday. He died at the age of ninety nine. He kind of a bummer. Well, he didn't want to go over. Okay. Okay. Just. Closest to 100 without closest going to over. 100 without going over, yes. Uh, yeah, so he started doing the, the Price is Right in 1972. I had no idea that he went back that far. And the, I guess, Price is Right was around for a while before that, but it had bounced from network to network, and it was almost dead when CBS got it and installed Barker as the host, and then it went to never-before-seen heights from that point on. And he did it until 2007. That's when he finally retired. Definitely part of, um, you know, the the fabric of all of our youths. You know, like, that guy was just part of of culture. Yeah. He was huge. And predating his start on Price is Right, in 1969, he started doing the New Year's Day term- Tournament of Roses parade as the MC. Okay. And he did that for quite some time. And in 67, he began a 20 year run as MC of the Miss Universe and Miss America pageants, which probably went very well with his pre Me Too proclivities. Yeah, he had some, didn't he? Yeah. He had a casting couch from reports. Yeah, but he was good to animals. So Bark- Barker's Dave. Beauties. He was good to animals. Yes, he also was very good to animals. Is there any chance I really did see him at that restaurant in Carmel? There's no, no way, right? Did not he had to have been 99. in his That guy looked like he was about 72 that you saw. He did look like Bob Barker, though. Yeah, I don't think his last public sighting before he died two was, months ago was you. He might have been feeling great two months ago, but the odds of him being out at age 99 at a... Carmel restaurant are not very high. Yeah. Not very high. Uh, there was controversy at the weekend box office as both Barbie and Gran Turismo claimed victory over what the is weekend. Gran Turismo. It's a that's, video game. <laughs> that's the one that <laughs> the we. Drop. That's the one we talked about um, a couple months ago. Maybe it was a grape fest, but it was about the true story of the kid that won a contest because he was so kick ass at the Gran Turismo video game that he won a spot in an academy and then actually from that point won a spot on some racing circuit and actually is a professional driver now. Yeah. So anyways, uh, Warner Brothers, the Barbie studio, claimed they won the weekend for the fifth time since Barbie opened, earning $15.1 million over the weekend. 
Sony, which produced Gran Turismo, claims that they won the weekend with 17.4 million, but that includes 1.4 million in previews last Thursday and 3.9 million in special screenings before that. So they're kind of padding their numbers. But if you believe that, Gran Turismo did take the weekend. And uh, I actually saw it yesterday because oh? my my daughter really wanted to see it. And it's good. You know, it's directed by uh, Neil Blomkamp, you know, the uh, District 9 guy. Yeah, that guy's great. Yeah, and it's it, it, it they use a lot of awesome drone footage. They use a lot of cool CGI tricks, you know, kind of melding the gamer environment with the real environment Mm -hmm. and if we ended up uh yesterday was four dollar ticket day you know national cinema day and so it was all formats were discounted and so so we saw it at like a dolby theater and if you can see it in like one of the higher end formats with the premiere sound system the sound design is amazing because you're when he would punch it when he would pass someone you could feel it rumble in the chair. It was really cool. I feel like Dave has really taken on the uh, the 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 mantle of being I go to movies a lot guy. I I mean it's it's something that well, me he's in and, charge of e news now. It's something <laughs> yeah, that me true. and the daughter enjoy doing together. Yeah, and I do even more now that I am e news. <laughs> I, I try. I am e news. I, I try to consume as much pop culture as possible. Sure. And sometimes it ends up rotting my brain, but other times it's fun. And I, I do, I do think Gran Turismo is well done, <laughs> and it's entertaining. And it is, you know, there is a kind of a sweet, heartwarming th- end to it, you know, because they do end up uh, placing on the podium. Not to give anything away, it's Spoiler a, real, it's, a real, it's a real story. But they placed on the podium at uh, twenty four hours of Le Mans. That's not the one where they do. No, that's pole position. Oh, dang it. That's pole position. God. I won't watch one minute of this. That joke is killing in the ticker room right now. (laughs) Weird memories that just gave me. (laughs) Gran Turismo is a a little bit better than pole position. If if you've ever played Gran Turismo, Mm -hmm. it it was a a Sony PlayStation video game. But the dude that... That built it. He's prominently featured in the movie as well. The the software developer, the gamer, game developer, and he was obsessed with cars from a very young age. And so, in Gran Turismo, the attention to detail in recreating the cars and recreating the tracks, everything is photorealistic. It's it's really quite amazing. And, That's cool. And the the movie pays that off. Um, Roku, you'll be happy to know, Bob. <clears throat> yes, sir. Has already renewed NFL draft. The pick is in for a second season. So I missed this on on Friday. Yes. So the show came out on Friday. Uh, evidently came out last week, I guess. So people were tweeting clips from it. I do want to see it, but I will also say that uh, I don't fully grasp how to go get it although i i'm pretty sure if i googled how do i get it it would be very easy yeah i've been assured you don't have to have a roku stick it's a, they're just they're getting they're putting sure. content out right yeah and uh the the cut in question on the day you were gone was jerry in the war room getting ready to, to draft overshown uh summonsing one grandson to call the other grandson who plays at texas to uh sign off on it and it made me crazy, but I didn't realize within like two hours they would trade for Trey Lance, and I would forget about it and move on to the next of thing course. that makes me crazy. Just move on, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe that's why he did the deal. Maybe too embarrassing to yeah. see his grandkid but, called but the Jerry. Grandkid. Jerry gets Spalding to get his brother on speaker, and then asked if Overshone is a good locker man. Locker man. <laughs> but yeah, so is he this, a good locker man? The first season. Uh, and it's legit. It's it's co-produced by Skydance Sports and NFL Films, so it's not like it's you know an off-brand docu series. Uh, but season one focused on the Panthers, the Colts, the Jags, and the Cowboys. They haven't announced who's going to uh, be followed for season two, but it will follow the 2024 draft in Detroit. So, okay, they have their NFL show now on Roku. Um, we have some uh, community quick hits. 
Inception style within E! News. Uh, a couple of music announcements. Dog Star, the Keanu Reeves band, they have announced their tour because they have a new uh, record coming out somewhere between the power lines and palm trees, Granada? which will be out in October. Yes! Yes! Dog Star will be at the Granada on September 26th, so you will be able to get to see Keanu up close. How about that? And Keanu Reeves at the Granada. And he so he plays bass. They're a three-piece, and if you're looking at the stage, he'll be on stage right. So if you get there early and you want to get some nice pics or selfies with Keanu, go to the right side of the stage if you're looking at the stage. Okay. Will he be shooting anybody from close range? Yeah. If you well, if you try to uh, if if you try to jump up on the stage and take an up close <laughs> selfie, yes, he'll sweep the leg and then put a bullet in the top of your dome, <laughs> just like John Wick. And uh, Corby's hero, Zach Bryan, mm-hmm. he has just announced a humongous stadium and arena tour. So he has a new self titled album out. And the tour supporting it is called the Quitten Time Tour, and it'll run through 2024. It uh, starts in Chicago, and it will end in his hometown of Tulsa in December of 2024. So it's it's a whole year long. And uh, among the support announced, Cheryl Crow on select dates, Turnpike Troubadours mm-hmm. on select dates, and... <gasps> Jason Isbell in the 400 unit. Bingo, 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 bingo. And they will be playing AT&T Stadium, the Death Star, August 17th next summer with Levi Turner and Jason Isbell as the support. So I guarantee Snake will be there trying to grift his way into a suite or perhaps to the front row. Yeah, I don't want to be in a suite for that, man means too much to me. By the way, Dog Star <laughs> tickets are already sold out, I'm being told. Oh, of course they are. Uh, yeah, that's really cool. But think about this. We did that segment on Zach Bryan three or four months ago in which... You I, discovered him. I asked you guys, yes. have you ever heard of Zach Bryan? You got him signed, as I a did. matter of fact. Gravy. And uh, he played Red Rocks less than a year ago and then released that record. Played it in November... And then, you know, I mean, he was known to his fans, clearly, if he's going to sell out Red Rocks. But here we are three months after that where you guys had never heard his name, and he's playing a full football stadium tour. Yes. And uh, I only, cannot believe how big he is. Only one date in uh, DFW, but if you look at the entire tour, there are several stops where he's doing two and three nights. It's incredible. I mean, this guy, like, skipped... Every small bar scene you possibly could. Like, all the mid-level places that you're supposed to play Mid. in the order of being a rock star. Yeah, yeah he skipped them all. <laughs> he just went straight to 100,000. So, yeah, if you want to get in on the pre-sale, registration is open now. Pre-sale begins September 6th, and then general public sale September 8th. And finally, this happened out in Rockwall, at a hotel in Rockwall. As Mitchell Musso, a former Disney actor, he played Oliver Oaken on Hannah Montana. So he co-starred along with Miley Cyrus on Hannah Montana. Yeah. He was arrested over the weekend. He was booked Saturday evening. It was around 7.15 p.m. And officers were called out for a disturbance at the hotel. 7.15 p.m. So not late. Not at all. But he was already blasted. And so when officers arrived, they were informed that an individual who appeared intoxicated had entered the hotel, grabbed a bag of chips, I guess, from the little concierge market at the front of the the hotel, and just started eating them without paying for them. And then when staffers asked him to pay, he became verbally abusive and then left. So then the officers looked around and they found him just right outside the hotel still eating the chips i guess can you arrest someone for stealing a 99 cent bag of chips yes <laughs> they like, determined that he was so. <laughs> they determined that he was intoxicated and so he was arrested on charges of public intoxication okay. and theft of an item under 100 dollars. so if he would not have been drunk they're not 
they're not doing anything to him, right? This was the combi- This was the Sam Williams. I had the weed and the gun yes. type thing. Yeah, if, Hello. If yeah. One I stole the chips and I'm wasted. Yeah, I mean, dude, you stole a 99 cent bag of chips, like that, and that got ended up getting you arrested. He also had several outstanding traffic warrants. Oh, that'll do so it he too. was also charged for expired registration, failure to display a driver's license, and violating a promise to appear. What, what? kind of chips? We don't know. We don't know. Takis probably. Yeah. When in doubt, go with when, Takis. And when you're wasted, Takis are delicious. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that is your E! News. Okay, thank you for that. Here's Dave. Well, yes, I teased that a former Navy Dave. SEAL went off in Frisco. This happened last week. Robert J. O'Neill. I don't know if that name rings a bell. Should it? Well, he is the former Navy SEAL that claims he fired the kill shot on Osama bin Laden. Mm. Was there a book about him, or like he was in a book? He wrote a memoir called The Operator. Okay. And he so was portrayed he, in Zero Dark Thirty, yeah? Yeah, he was. Yeah. So, yeah, he first said in 2014 that he was the one who fired the shots that killed bin Laden in 2011. Uh, the government has neither confirmed nor denied sure. that he was even involved, I guess. Is I that, guess they confirmed that he was there, but they haven't confirmed that he killed bin laden is that normal for a guy with that type of security to be bragging that he was the one i mean i get it you killed public enemy number one on the planet but do you are you supposed to do that i are they cool with you like oh yeah tell everyone i'm sort of unclear on how that works as well i seems fishy right well if you're discharged i suppose you have the rights to your own story as long as you're not violating any classified things but I don't. I, I don't know how it works, yeah. and I also don't know what like bro code, bro code is in the Marines or, or was that Marines? Yeah, it was Marines, yeah. right? Navy SEAL. Oh, okay. Well, part of the Navy. Yes, the Navy. <laughs> yes, I agree with you on that. Sorry, back to you, Dave. So he was in Frisco last week. He, according to his social media posts, he was in Frisco for a podcast at a cigar lounge on Tuesday. Okay. And on Wednesday, not sure what time on Wednesday, it may have been in the wee hours of Wednesday morning after this podcast party at the Cigar Lounge on Tuesday night. But on uh, Wednesday of last week, he was arrested for assault causing bodily injury, a misdemeanor charge, and a misdemeanor charge of public intoxication. Mm. And so he was released same day, Wednesday, on $3,500 bond. And so not sure uh, when he's going to have to be back to, uh, you know, answer to those charges. But, yeah, he first, uh, you know, claimed in 2014 that he was the one who killed bin Laden. And then he was also in the news in 2020 when he got banned by Delta Airlines in the midst of COVID. He was on a flight and removed his face mask when they were required on flights Mm -hmm. and was... uh, being belligerent, I suppose, with oh boy. the airline crew. Yeah. So yes, Robert J. O'Neill, national he, he, national hero, but also maybe a little crazy. I don't know. Does it say what the assault actually entailed? No, we did. We don't have further details at this time. Right. Another at busy, community quick hits. Another busy day for the Frisco Police Department, though. Yeah. We have uh, sad news. From Southlake, as the Carroll ISD has announced that Friday evening, a seventh grade student died after having a medical emergency on campus Thursday morning. The kid's name, uh, Julio Oliveira, and he went to Carroll Middle School. And so Carroll ISD released a statement saying, our thoughts and prayers go out to Julio's family and loved ones during this incredibly difficult time. But they did not uh, offer any further information, including what happened when he experienced this medical emergency. But mm. it happened on campus there at Carroll Middle School Thursday morning, and then uh, as of Friday evening, he passed away. So thoughts for the community out there in South Lake. Meanwhile, in Plano, Plano West Senior High, even though today was, as we've mentioned, quite a nice weather day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Plano it's only West. 100 right now. Oh, it's yeah. got up to 100 finally? Yeah. Did it really? It says so on uh, this year's computer. 
<laughs> Man, I thought the high was supposed to be well, like 95. Well, that's convincing. Yeah. <laughs> that's all I got. <laughs> well, Plano West High School had classes canceled Friday Plano. and Monday today because of ongoing AC issues. Well, yeah. I mean, look, even though it's nice, it doesn't mean it's nice inside of a place with no AC. Right. You're going to be freaking dying. Yeah. So they had mechanical problems with the HVAC system at Plano West on Friday that forced them to close the school early. Oh, God. And then you're praying all weekend, like, please, please let this continue. Yes. Let us get Monday off. And, dude. Yes. The Plano West students got their wish as school was closed today. Because uh, they were trying to repair the system all last week, but it has, quote, continued to deteriorate and more time is needed to properly and thoroughly resolve the issue. So they say to parents, we want to assure you that we are making every effort and working around the clock to mitigate these concerns in collaboration with our district maintenance crew and outside HVAC professional contractors. You know, I know drugs are good, you know, make you feel good, Uh right? Good stuff in there. There is no better high. You will never replicate the high that you get as a kid when you find out in the morning that you don't have school. When it's he's right when you're yes. supposed to go. That kids, is the ultimate. And kids have it so easy that now because back in the day it was like listening for lottery numbers. Yeah. When, you're much, for yeah. your, when you're waiting for your, your school to be announced that it was out. Right. Yeah. Now you get a an update to your school app or you get a text. Your parents get a text from the district or something. Typically they know the night before almost it seems or at least in our case that's that's been the way it is. But yeah, if you could bottle that high of that five minutes where you're just like, oh my God, oh, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna and like you're calling your friends like we don't have to go to school. What are we doing? Where do you want to meet? What's going on? Are we going to play basketball or are we going to play football? Yeah, just do whatever. Are we going to ride bikes? Do whatever. Are we going to play video games? Have you eaten yet? Should we eat? I don't know. (laughs) So, Travis. Yes. Do you feel good about that 100? I keep, oh, actually, I keep I getting don't. highs Uh-oh. of like, oh no. No, upon further review, that their computer the, was wrong. I think the computer got me, guys. Okay, because I, I, I see me. a couple highs of like ninety five and ninety six yeah. today. And that's not, and that's what that's below hundred. That well, only below hundred in, in most c- countries. Yes. Travis got exterminated. No, 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 no. We're uh, this is a, this is a, this is a peaceful follow up. Yeah. Is all. I didn't expect to get checked like that on on the weather. Though. Well, look, I did immediately check it on my phone. According to the DFW airport temperature, the high today was ninety four. Yeah, so not a hundred. By the way, un one hundred six <laughs> degrees less than one hundred. By the way, what do you guys think the normal temperature is for August the twenty eighth? Normal high temperature. I'm sorry. In Tejas, uh, in Dallas? Dallas. Yeah. Let's go ninety ninety four. Yeah, I think we're on the button for what it should be. Like when you be. say okay, when you minute. say the norm, how do you uh, know this? It is ninety four. It is to me in my head. It's like one hundred and two. That's normal. Like this feels like we're getting a. I'm doing the ten year rolling average. I know, but I mean, I feel like every August, especially late August, it's so miserable. Ninety four well, seems really doable, and it would make me like August. See, I I, I think if uh, we could flash forward or flash back to a ninety four summer. Uh, you would then find that to be hot, and what we're talk- what's happening here is you have normalized 108, and so 94 feels great. This is the exact same theory as if you pay 425 a gallon for gas, suddenly 365 feels like the cheapest gas ever. When deep inside your soul, you know yeah. that 365 is still ridiculous. It's insane. Like I know, like even as happy as we were eating lunch on a patio today. In my head, I know it's wrong and it's miserably hot, but yet it felt wonderful. No, it was it fine. It felt like we it were felt beautiful outside. But what if this would have been? We play Dave, acted. We were at Chipotle in Paris. <laughs> what if we would have been? It was. Let's say it's uh, April first, all right, or April uh-huh. whatever, and it's seventy-five degrees that day. The next day, it's ninety-four. Would we have sat on that patio? I don't know. No, <laughs> no, it's what? mind it would game. Feel like one hundred and eight. What did I get? You failed. You, just you said, failed today and tomorrow. No, what did, what did I order that day? Your answer oh, was, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, couple more things that we have to get to. We have to get to these. Uh, one is uh, another bit of cleanup from Friday. <laughs> as authorities recovered a tiger in 
Oak Cliff. Dude, what is happening with all these tigers? I don't. I don't believe is this, this is, trap boy. I work? don't believe this is Trap Boy Freddy's tiger. Okay. But there was an animal cruelty investigation that was uh, being executed. They had four search warrants for a property in the uh, 5700 block of Johnson Lane near Bonnie View and East Ledbetter. And so they found a tiger in an enclosure in the property. And so the tiger was seized as well as an unspecified number of dogs and chickens. Mm. And so charges are pending. They did not say who owns the property or who faces charges or what those charges are. But uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department are assisting with the investigation. And Dallas Animal Services and the Dallas Zoo are assisting with the animals. And if you didn't know... The Big Cat Public Safety Act, federal law, went into effect this last December. It's illegal to possess a tiger and other big cats. This was made law in December of 2022? Yes. Didn't Seems Luca a want late. a pet tiger when he first got here? He was joking. Yeah, so it, was he? If you, oh, well, if, you, yeah. if you owned a pet tiger before the law went into effect, you had to register your animal by this past June 18th. And no doubt, do you think whoever this person was in South Oak Cliff did not register that tiger. Why, why are or black, Armando Galarraga. Why are black guys into tigers? <laughs> Big cat. Whoa, bro. Black guys are into... What? What do you mean? What, whoa, bro. Don't whoa, bro me. <laughs> okay, and finally, we got to get to this. Because tomorrow morning, Who's the real big cat. Tomorrow morning, between seven and nine, at the AT and T Discovery District in downtown, Good Morning America will have a taco contest. Okay, you know what they're doing? They're one up in the Ryder Cup announcement. They're just trying to be like, all right, we, you want to do something up there? We'll do something down here. We'll see who, see if tacos can beat golf. Yeah. Yes. Because this is on the heels of the poll that said Dallas has the 20th best tacos in the country, just ahead of Minneapolis. Yeah. <laughs> so they're, they're going to four different cities. Good Morning America is doing the, their United States of Tacos bit. And so they uh, went to Chicago today, tomorrow Dallas, then Miami and Atlanta, and then one winner. So there's two participants from each city. And then the winner from each city will go to New York this Friday, and the winner of Friday's competition will get twenty grand. Nice. So the two representatives for Dallas, Jesus Carmona, <laughs> he owns Milagro in West Dallas. He also used to own a place called Tacos Mariachi that was on Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. Yep. And then the other guy, Gustavo de los Rios, he is the owner of Mami Coco in Dallas, which is has been named the best taco shop in Dallas on Yelp for last year. Do you so, think Bill Smith has a chance? I was going to say at least these guys sound legit, right? Fred. Yeah, I mean these these guys definitely know what they're doing, and they will represent Dallas well and show the people that that list was completely bogus. And the judges, by the way, tomorrow you will have a former Top Chef contestant. And Chef Evelyn Garcia, you will have uh, Channel 8 morning anchor Mark Istook, and you will have Dallas Maverick Grant Williams. Wow. Judging wow. on the panel. His first big public appearance right? is a taco eating contest or something. Yeah, so uh, we're going to have to uh, have somebody monitor GMA and pull some audio okay. in the morning. All right. Let's do that. All right. Good stuff, David. Get the Steak Podcast at Patreon dot com slash sports greek